Traders, uh, that's enough for me today. I had a very good day today as you can see here and I'm done trading. Let's go quickly through some of my trades today and explain what we've seen in the market. So firstly you can see here that I had a small mistake here, relatively small mistake with Tesla expecting it to move up a little bit. I did say that it was intended to be a scalp, meaning I did not intend to keep following Tesla as it moves higher. I just wanted to have like a small portion of the move up. So that would be like a scalp trying to get in and out, but I did not estimate uh, uh, how the market came down with such a big downside momentum. And anyway, Tesla turned out to be a loser. What's interesting is um, I'll talk about ZM real soon because it is my big winner, um, a normal, let's call it this way, winner in Twitter and uh, three trades in Google, two of them long until I finally realized uh, Google wants to come down and that was also the time where the market came down and uh, the third was a short which did manage to put me back in small green territory. So finished in green in Google too. Let's first go to Google and talk a little bit about what happened to Google because that's something uh, I believe that uh, um, there's some educational material here which uh, could help you. So, you know, Google started with a huge gap up today. So Google started with a gap up, you expect it to gap and go. So the first trade was going long over here and then it failed and it came down. I had to have my stop loss, of course, I moved out. Then it made another attempt to move higher. Now again, at that point, if you take a look at the S&P, let me put up the S&P 500 here. At that point, these are five minute candles, Google is one minute candle. So you can see that at that point, the S&P was still at the highs, although started with a gap down today. And you couldn't know what direction the market will pick. I'll talk about market direction soon. Um, I, 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 we, we did see that the market was under pressure, but not at that point. So at that point, going long Google the second time was the right thing to do. However, another stop loss over here. Now, Google had an amazing, really amazing technical formation for short right here. That's where I turned size and I went short and it worked out very well. So as you can see, relatively two small losers, but one very, very big winner, which I'm still riding. So managed to, to cover my two losers in uh, Google. So anyway, Google came down and um, they, what I would like to, to, to you to remember from this is that, you know, sometimes a stock is really proving to you what is the direction it wants to pick. Try to move higher once, failed. Tries to move higher twice, fails. Now just think about the people who went long, just like I did. What do they think? Would they take the third chance of Google trying to move higher or would they just say, you know, most people don't short. Traders short. Most people don't short. If you ask a person in the street, 99% of them won't know what is shorting. If you ask uh, people who are investing in the market, they will know what is shorting about, but 90% of them never shorted the stock. So that's our, in fact, that's our advantage here, which we can just flip sides and go short Google, which worked out really well. Now, uh, the more interesting trade, education wise, is going to be ZM. It's also my biggest winner today. Now, but it does not start with ZM. In fact, it starts with the S&P. Now, take a look at the S&P here. First, you can see the big drop we had when the coronavirus started. And then for some strange reason, whatever, I mean, the market is allowed to work in <laughs> very strange ways. And I, can, I can't really explain uh, why the market was uh, moving to a new all-time highs. And, you know, that, that's the uh, interesting thing about the market. The fact is that I cannot understand it is what makes me a trader because I do not know when and where to trust the market. But sometimes for short periods, we know what's happening. Like we knew when the market came down in March, we knew that we can short it. We had uh, a lot of fun shorting the market in March. And now uh, something quite interesting is happening. Well, first, there's no fundamental reason for the market to spike up to new highs. And we all know that. I mean, uh, the situation around the world, the econ economic situation around the world is just terrible. But again, I don't fight the market. Then the market is moving down. Fine. Then the market is trying to move to a new high. Now we've got a double top here, which is a technical formation where the market may move lower. And of course, you can't know that before it starts moving lower. Now look at this very nice 
uh, bear flag formation over here. Let me show that a bit bigger. So that's a nice bear formation over here. And since we came down just a few days ago, uh, I was expecting the market to come down. And that's for several reasons. First, we are in front of the election. The election is a big uncertainty. Market hates uncertainty. So whenever there is uncertainty, uh, political uncertainty, financial uncertainty, that's a good excuse for the market to come down. And of course, we have the double top and we had the bear flag and we came down. Yesterday was a day where the market was resting. We talked about it in the trading room for the past few days, expecting it to come down, talking about yesterday could be a rest day. And today I came in and I said, well, basically, I expect the market to continue coming down. And it does. We have a big downside day today. Now, why would that matter? Because I'm not investing in the market. I'm not shorting the market. Why does that happen? Well, you know what? It not only saved my ZM trade, it actually made it better. Now, take a look at my ZM trade. And that's, uh, and, and that's the interesting part about uh, uh, anticipating the market move. And of course, I take a look at the market intraday. It finally moved under the lows. When the, when the market was trying to move higher, I didn't really trust it to move higher because I was expecting the S&P to come down in the next few days. Not necessarily today. We started by moving higher. Well, I was kind of looking at this and I was saying to myself, well, I don't trust it, but if it's going to move higher, I'm a trader, I'll follow the market. No big deal. But then the market started to move back to the lows. And then at that point, I said, OK, there's a very high likelihood now that the market will come under the lows because I'm expecting the market to come down. That's when I shorted ZM. Now, shorting ZM also came from a point of looking back at some of the last few days and seeing how ZM came down very strong. You remember I posted ZM short somewhere over here yesterday in the trading room. I moved my eyes for a second. I missed this trade. It was, I don't know how many points, 30 points trade or something like that. I missed it. And I was kind of remembering ZM is under pressure. So in my mind, ZM is under pressure. In my mind, I'm expecting the market to come down. So I'm looking for a point to short ZM. I am shorting ZM. ZM is doing well. However, does not reach my target right over here. I was looking for more. And then a very nasty pullback. When you take a look at this nasty pullback and you take a look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 was in fact under the lows by then. And when the S&P 500 just continued to come down and ZM pulled back up, I had no reason moving out of ZM. Now, we're talking always about knowing where your stop loss should be. In fact, that was our topic yesterday in the Star Trader course. You should have a stop loss. But we also mentioned yesterday in our Star Trader course that you need to be, you must be extremely flexible at some times. Now you see the market coming down. In the overall picture, you expect the market to continue coming down. You short ZM, you know ZM is under pressure, you do have a stop loss, but you give it a bit more. You know, my stop loss was around here, uh, 485. It actually moved up like um, one and a half point, maybe two points more. So it, 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 it did get to the point where I should have been stopped out of ZM. But again, I'm looking at the market and I expect the market to continue down. I'm looking at ZM and technically speaking, ZM hasn't done anything wrong. Just a small pullback of uh, this big downside move. That's like a 50% pullback from the lows, maybe 61%. You could <laughs> play the Fibonacci on this one and see that it didn't really pull back up a little bit too much. Yes, I should have had my stop, but stop must always be flexible. Not only that. Now, again, keep in your mind the fact that I am expecting the market to come down. Now I see a big downside momentum and then ZM finally gives up and starts coming down. Isn't that a perfect place to add a trade which I posted in the trading room? And I did add to ZM short. At that point over here, I was red after shorting ZM here. At that point over here, I was adding, seeing the market comes down, believing that the market should continue. Look at ZM right now. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, how many points do I have in ZM? I stopped counting. <laughs> I stopped counting. Whatever. Anyway, 
when you take a look at ZM, you take a look at the market and you put everything in together, that's why we're interested in the market direction. That's why we're thinking, okay, the S&P is coming down. And since we support that, we believe in that, we could add more size. We could give ZM a little bit more margin here to move higher. We could uh, concentrate on shorts. Um, yes, I did one mistake with Tesla. Definitely did one mistake with Tesla. Happens. I'm a human being. But end result, when you do things right, you earn $27,000 in an hour. Well, that was my game. Anyway, traders, uh, that was a fantastic week. We really enjoyed this week. I wish you all a great weekend. Uh, those of you in YouTube, if you are not yet in our Facebook uh, group, just look for TradeNet Stock Talks. Um, I'm sure Clifton could post the link right now and um, join us there. We would love to see you there. And um, the rest of you, just uh, take care. Have a fantastic weekend. And I really hope next week will be as good as it was today. And those of you who are in Star Trader course, we're going to talk about uh, gap and goals today and other type of gaps in our Star Trader course. So thank you very much. And uh, give us a thumb up if you're on YouTube and see you next week.